composing gloves here and today we're going to be reviewing artistry audios origin x so it is this instrument right here it's their first instrument let's start off with a sound demo and then we'll dive into what i consider to be uh, up to date the best contact gui i've ever seen <laughs> like i thought i had seen the best one that i was going to see for a while they just keep getting better this one is really really impressive you'll see why in a second so uh, let's go ahead and first let's start off. So we've got here the first layer of loops is it here in blue. The second layer is in red. So there's two layers we can work with. Let's just hear a couple of these sounds here. So there's one. Now I should note that when you listen to these, you've got to be aware that if you come into the browser and go to the preset, so there's like instruments and this is like a bunch of things wrapped up all in one. So you could just pick a vibe sort of and go from there. But if you come in and go to the preset browser, you can choose your kit. This is like the uh, sounds that you pick. So this is dots and loops. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff. There's a huge array of stuff too. Uh, the next thing is we've got sounds presets. So this is kind of like effects. It's more like the shape of the sound if I were looking for a word to sort of describe it. So we go like here's interplanetary. And here's extra bubbles. Front and back. So they've gotten really creative with the actual behavior of the loops, which makes one loop like viable for like a hundred different scenarios. Uh, and it's really, really fast to sort of pick through them. And then finally you have your classic effects presets here at the end. So we go for like echo chamber. Like that's insane how, how much you can get out of just one loop. So this is, is a, like basically I picture it as just a giant um, effects, wild effects processor. You could just quickly pump it through and see what stuff sounds like. There's some of the power there. Now let me show you a bit about the behavior because it's also really easy to work with in a way that I think a lot of other loop libraries struggle to do. And that is it's really easy to retune the loop. So down here, you notice this red F key. If you push it, it changes the key layout. So this is with like nothing on. Uh, we'll get to this one in a sec. And then you've got the retuning option. So the retuning is so that when you play notes down here, it's going to tune it to that note. So you can very easily make sure it's playing the correct note. So let's come down here. Let's put down a note. What the heck? We'll do an F and then we can make it play an A. We could go down. And so this is really, really nice. Um, I, this is actually made so, I can't believe I haven't seen this done in other libraries. So really, really cool way of dealing with loops and very quickly tuning them. Because typically when you get tonal loops like this, you're kind of told, here you go. If you want to retune it, you're going to have to do it kind of a thing. So if you hit this key again and again, you're going to get to these green and then the red, the like the light orange keys. So these orange keys control the speed of the loop. They're basically time multipliers. And then these are like entire effect chain triggers. So if you have these going on, but you'd like to sort of do this in real time, you kind of can. So if we come in and let's find one, here we go. We're in the range and this just, you know, here's the loop now with this effect trigger. And right now they're turning off. So if they turn off on you, there's a way to control this. Go up to the cog icon and then choose latch. Uh, the latch may cause it to, you know, latch. So you can see now it's pushing down. Go up to A. So you can get so much mileage out of one thing. It's I think they really did a fantastic job here with this. So as far as flexibility goes, it gets a huge 10 out of 10 for me. Really, really well done. And there's a bunch of other stuff in here, but I think they got like the really, really important stuff down. 
So let's go ahead and go through just a couple more sounds and then let's dive into uh, the GUI a little bit and some of the, the possible power that you have on top of all this stuff already. So let's dig a little bit more through the library a bit so you can just sort of get a feel for all the stuff that's in here. So here's some pitch effect where I'm on a 222 Twisted Tools. Every time I hear something like this, I've got a kick drum layered up here. I just imagine a kick behind it. Maybe a, a deeper kick and then, you know, away we go. Like I just get big deep house vibes from it all the time. Uh, let's go over to the chill category. There's some pretty cool stuff in here. So here we've got, uh, we've picked a kit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into the preset browser I'm going to change uh, the sound that we have. The effect preset. So some of these, like these ones, especially that have the lo-fi sort of bit crusher stuff on them, they're going to have, um, they're going to work really well on certain things. And then as you can hear, not so great on others. So the first time you hear preset, definitely consider coming in and changing the effect presets in the sound presets. quickly get rolling that gives you an idea of some of the stuff that's in here there's some really cool cello stuff i forgot to favorite that it just sounded so good it's somewhere in this uh, so you're able to favorite things and then you can come down and search by favorites uh, which is really convenient so if there's some that you really really like you're able to very quickly find them uh, i should also point out that when you come up to the key lock icon they actually have another way to browse kits uh, that is just really convenient as well. So you come and try this stuff out. Let's go down to the seat. So this this sort of a library would work well with pretty much anything EDM. I think cinematic stuff would sound great with this as well. Excellent for layers and top loops. And I could definitely see this in hip hop and stuff. So if you're into those kind of genres and that's what you like to make, this is definitely a library you probably want to check out. All right, so that's the bulk of what you're going to be doing when you grab the instrument. At least for me, they've got enough and enough variation that I'd probably be happy just messing with that stuff for a long time. But they've added a huge deep dive side to this, a really deep, deep side dive. So if you really want to get into it, you can. So one of the first things they did that I thought was really cool was they have macro knobs. And you're able to come in and you're able to customize what these macro knobs control. You can come into edit macro. You can turn the motion on and you can, uh, you know, create some modulation effects as you go here. And that is the, the macro. So for example, we could have this move something like a reverb. We could have it dialed all the way up and then we could turn it on, which is represented by a little fire, which I think is cool. They have also got a, a modulation source. So you can see whether or not that's on or off. So let's just have this on all the time right now. I guess we could just turn it off. And so this is what it sounds like with our reverb macro. <laughs> So maybe we want it to turn off over time and maybe halfway through just drop out. You're able to do a bunch of really cool stuff here. I'm not going to dive into everything that's possible here because as you can see, 
it gets pretty intense. So we could control all the things about the verb if we want to. Like it's a true macro knob. It's not just like, oh, this just controls the verb a little. Like you get full control over the verb. It's pretty wild. So you've got some macro knobs. If we come in here, we go into the main. Uh, I do want to point out the stack function. So this puts the two layers together. They were careful to make sure that the octaves aligned up. So if you want, uh, something interesting you can do is you can actually play one an octave down and then an octave up. Which, am I too high? I think I'm too high. We want to go down here and up. So the material is, it's not the same material. They're different loops, but they fit really well together and they've been processed differently. And because of that, it adds an extra layer of flexibility and it's just intuitive. Like it makes sense that if you push an octave, it should sound like it blends. So they have this merge or the stack option that allows you to just put them together. So those, those notes are off. So we just heard the release right there. But if we just play this out all the way. Uh, it just sounds so good. Every time I hear something like that, I'm just like, I just hear an epic trailer like happening right now. All right, so that's all the stuff on the main page that I think we're really gonna dive into. Up next, we've got sounds. And here, we've got the ability to really control and chop up our loops. And so it's really, really cool to be able to just adjust loops very quickly. If you have a part that you wanna reverse really quickly, you can. And they've got some integrated controls down here. It's There's a lot to unpack here. If you are familiar with uh, synthesizers you'll find your way around this area no problem if you're not it's definitely going to be a bit of a trek down there and you normally don't need to come in here unless you have some specific thing in mind or you're just sort of screwing around and seeing what kind of cool sounds you can get out of it so i'm not really going to cover this too much in detail just because there's already so much there is one thing i really like though and it's the fact that they gave us an actual envelope uh, picture so we could see the envelope. I, I appreciate that touch a lot. That's something you normally don't see. You might be going, it's just an envelope, but it's in contact. That's the thing. You normally don't see this kind of stuff in contact because it's, uh, it's a bit of a pain to implement and they did it. So that's really, really cool. All right, so we're going to move over to effects now. So here's effects. There's not a lot for me to say here just because, you know, it's compression, it's filtering, it's drive, it's lo-fi. Uh, but I will say I really, really like the icon, the icons they picked. This isn't something I normally say because, you know, it's icons. I can't care more about how it sounds. But man, it looks dang cool. I mean, you got to give them credit for looking cool. So you have individual controls over the different layers. Uh, so if you want layer one to be really, really compressed and layer two to not have any, you can do that. Uh, so it's pretty nifty the way that they've set things up here. And then if you want to, you could come in, we could choose a different effect preset, like maybe swirl dive, close it. And now we're going to have different effects turned on and then changed around. So for example, let's go for another one. So let's just take a look. We've got compression, filter drive, basically everything except lo-fi. Let's pick another one and close it. And you can see it updates. So we're able to adjust it. So maybe the presets got everything you want, but there's like, it's got the lo-fi effect on. So it's got some bit crushing and some sample rate reduction. You don't want that. You can come in, turn it off and boom, you've got pretty much what you're looking for. And then the last thing that we have in here is again, macros. So that is Origin X in a nutshell. There's a ton in here. Let's go ahead and dig through just a couple more sounds uh, just to give you a better vibe for it. So let's go for Airy this time. Go for the Misty Mountains. And I'll, I'll put down just a couple. And we'll just sort of dig through some of these kits here. Here's the Epiphany. Level Legit. Centrifugal Forces. Let's go over some symphonic stuff. See what they got. Here's blurred memories. Let's go through some chill. Let's uh, come down here. Let's pick something like Dawn Extraction. Open air. Let's 
strange apparition. Apparition? Apparition? So C is normally a drum loop, so if you leave that one out, you get like the tonal sort of drone-like stuff. And this is stuff that I'm constantly looking for anyways, so it's really nice to just have a big variety of stuff to pick from. So that is Origin X. If you have any questions about this, let me know. There'll be a link down in the description if this is something you'd like to check out. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And I'm also kind of curious, what do you guys think of instruments like this? I know there's sort of this stigma out there. Oh, it's a loop instrument. It's a phrase instrument. I want to write the loops and the phrases. I could definitely say that it's really, really helpful to have some starting point stuff and then just sort of fill things in later. Uh, so I actually really, really like instruments like this, and they're extremely useful to to me. I know some hardcore people that like to write in like every last little thing. Um, they, you know, but I, you know, you know, that's just my take on it. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments and have a blessed day.